Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats, Groovy Chicks, and Finger Poppin' Daddies. And I'm going to be talking about how to add upper extensions to your dominant seventh chords. Now I'm going to mainly concentrate on the left hand, you know, so that your right hand is free to improvise and, and play melodies and play scales. And but I want you to know that you can play these voicings in your right hand when you're comping or when you're voicing chords and you're playing in a trio or in a band or something, you can use these voicings as well. You can dress up your dominant sevenths. You want to add the upper extensions and alter them. You want to add ninths, flat nines, sharp 11, 13, flat 13s, this type of thing. And they're very easy, simple moves and I'm going to show you those in the left hand, how you just move one note at a time to get these really interesting jazz sound. Get this jazz sound into your, into your hands and know what scales to play on them. So here we go now with upper extensions. Here we go. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. I'm going to be talking about how to alter your dominant seventh chords to get more of the jazz sound in your playing. And I'm going to give you a few examples of things you can do that are very easy, easy moves in your left hand using rootless voicings. How to add flat nines, sharp nines, sharp 11, flat 13s, 13s, this sort of thing. Now I did a video recently on rootless voicings showing you how to do the 251. I'm going to review that now and then show you how to dress it up with alterations on, your do on the dominant seventh chord. Remember the 2-5-1 is going to go minor seven or minor nine to dominant seventh and then on the five and then major nine on the one. So we'll take C, key of C first, D minor seven in root position. Just move down these two down to get to the G7 and then the C major 7 is right there. So now to go to the first inversion, which is the A form, we move that D minor 7 up to the first inversion and then drop the root, add the ninth. So now we have a D minor 9, you see. And to go to the G7, we only need to have one small move, just that middle note there moves down a half step to the B and we have the G 9 13. So already, already have the 9th and the 13th in the chord with that. If we wanted just a G7 we'd have to go, we'd have to go like that. But it's so simple to just move one note, right? And we get the color tones in there and then resolve it there to the C major 9. Now how do we get, how can we dress up that G7 now. We have that, well we can flat the nine, that's the first thing, so just lower the ninth, there's the ninth there, the A to A flat, now we have the flat nine in here. Now we can play a scale, an altered dominant scale or a diminished scale that picks up that flat nine by using half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole, alternating. So it has a flat 9, a sharp 9, sharp 11, and it picks up the 13. Important thing is it picks up the flat 9 and the 13 that are in the chord. So now using it melodically we might do something like this. Sharp 5. Sharp 5 is the same as a flat 13. And the computer doesn't understand that that's a flat 13. It's just interpreting it as a sharp 5. That's okay. It's the same thing as a flat 13. Now, with that one, we can use a super low green scale. Now, that's just the same as the diminished scale starting in a half step, but now it's all whole steps at the end. 
so we get that flat 13 in there. Flat 9, sharp 9, third, sharp 11, flat 13, set flat 7, so then melodically. That's a real nice one, that's a Chick Corea thing, that he plays that scale and so does Herbie Hancock. You know, it's got that augmented sound to it. Um, now, the only other thing I, I'm going to show you there is if using the sharp 11. Not as common, and the computer doesn't even understand it. Maybe. No, it doesn't. There it is. You have to get the just exact right voicing for the computer to understand the sharp 11. But there it is. Sharp 11 now is the 11 raised, so it's 8, 9, 10, 11. Now the scale I would use with the sharp 11, and you're not altering the, the ninth, or, you know, 13th could be in there, but um, the one I would use with the straight 9 and the sharp 11 would be the, like a G Mixolydian, actually a Lydian scale with a flat 9, because we want that sharp 11 in there, so Lydian would be like playing a D scale starting so we want that C sharp in there D scale starting on G so we want that sharp 4 in there and then we want to flat the 7 so there's the scale different scales you can use now with these alterations on the dominant seventh chord. So now let's look, that was the A form, let's look what we can do with the B form. And we're going to use a different key now because it's going to sound better in F than in C. If we did it in C it's going to be way up too high. So in F we're going to have G minor 9 to C7 to F. So the G minor 9 we want to get up there by going to the third inversion dropping the root, adding the ninth. So there you have the G minor 9. If you go to the C7, you just have to lower that bottom note a half step. And you get the C9, 13, automatically. The 13 is there, and there's the ninth. So there it is. So now for that scale, you want a straight... Uh, you want a straight 9, so you can use the Lydian flat 7 scale again. Lydian, Lydian scale. I mean a straight the dominant seventh scale or mix of Lydian. You get the straight nine and the thirteen in there. So now let's alter that dominant seventh chord. What can we do? Well we can do something interesting. We can flat the nine and flat the thirteen. And then we can use that with the tritone substitute. an F sharp 9, but let's use it with the C7. And now with that flat 13 or that sharp 5, you want to use that super locrian scale again. So remember it's half, half, whole, half, and then all whole. something interesting by putting in a sharp 9. This didn't work so well in the A form, but in the B form we can put the sharp 9 in like that. You see? Just raising that 9 to there. And then let's keep the flat 13 in there. Now we have the sharp 9. There it is. Sharp 9, sharp 5. Sharp 5 is the same as flat 13. So now we can use the super low green, right? Half all, half all whole. sharp 9 and move it to the flat 9. That's very common use use in, in voice in chord voicings in jazz. Sharp 9, flat 9, like it. Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, use that scale all the 
side. So there you have some examples now of how to alter that dominant seventh chord and get a better sound and be able to play on more interesting scales. So I hope this is useful for you and we'll have a sign off now. Thanks so much for joining me on this trip through altering dominant seventh chords, how to add flat nines, sharp elevens, flat thirteens, and so on, and what scales to play. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was useful. And if you want more on this, check out the links below to other videos that I've done on this subject. So until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend upstairs, Hermie Dressel, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.